Hello, and welcome to Charger Bulletin News. I'm Kaylee Feschler. The Chargers basketball teams held their annual Midnight Madness pep rally last week to kick off their seasons. Here's reporter Sandrea Devanish with more from the event. On Wednesday, October 18th, the University of New Haven held Midnight Madness, where basketball teams and groups on campus could have a sort of a pep rally before the season. I think it's definitely sort of like your uh, good old pep rally of sorts for our basketball teams. It's a great way to introduce them to the basketball teams for the season. I'm excited for like their entire season, like to play with my teammates. It's like my last year to play with them and make a bond with them. We're excited and looking forward to that. Uh, they're hungry. They've done uh, a lot of work in the off season uh, to improve their game. So uh, our coaching staff is, is is pretty pumped about that. Not only were the teams able to strut their stuff, but so were some of our groups on campus. We got the UNH dance team. We got the Monsoon dance team. We got Elite Step team. We have five, six, seven, eight dance team, and we have our new salsa dance team called Incendio. For the University of New Haven, I'm Sandra Devanish for the Charger Bulletin. This week, the three candidates for West Haven mayor answered questions at the forum on the University of New Haven campus. Here's Khalid Crowder with more on what they had to say. I'm here at the West Haven Mayoral Forum where the three candidates are speaking to the faculty, staff, and students. I'm Khalid Crowder from the Charger Bulletin. On Wednesday, October 25th, candidates Nancy Rossi, Dave Riccio, and Ed O'Brien voiced their vision for the future of West Haven. We must work together to make that post road a place where your parents who come and visit will stay. You're an integral part of the future of West Haven, and, and, and you have to be included, and it's something that I believe was lacking, but we are meeting with them on a regular basis and partnering with the UNH in many, many cases. I'd like to see the bus from UNH, because my understanding is on weekends, and I could be wrong, UNH goes someplace else, the students. I'd like to see UNH <coughs> the students stay here in West Haven, because it is your home. The forum started with moderator Juan Hernandez, director of the Maya Center for Diversity and Inclusion, asking questions that centered around the university community. I will continue a, a cooperative program with UNH students and faculty because I want to see us all work together. Audience members got the chance to ask questions as well, including one student who was a part of the mayor's advisory commission who asked how that program could continue and grow. Well, we thought, I think we can should increase and see what we can do more. Make sure you involve them in, in more things that are going not only around the university, but along our shore and in our center. We'll meet with your groups. We'll continue to, to meet with the groups and meet with other uh, diverse groups in UNH because your involvement is important. You are the end users of a lot of things that are going on in this area and the city of West Haven. For the Charger Bulletin, I'm Kelly Crowder. In addition to the forum, candidate Nancy Rossi, the endorsed Democrat, sat down with reporter Kiana Quinones to talk about how her administration would impact university students. So to start, can you tell me why you think you would be the best leader for West Haven? I believe I'd be the best leader for West Haven because a lot of the problems throughout the city are um, contingent on the bad financial condition and our deficit growing. And because of this, businesses a lot of times are leery to come here because people have high taxes and, and they, don't, they don't pay vendors and, and things like that. I am a certified public accountant and I believe my expertise in finance um, would definitely help. And I also give that kind of advice to business clients right now. And so therefore, because of my education, financial background, I think I would be the best of the three candidates to lead West Haven. The University of New Haven announced their new partnership with Fox 61 News this week. Fox 61 will be setting up a bureau on the university campus and will be reporting daily from the studio. Thomas Garrett, chair of the Communications, Film and Media Studies Department, said, quote, The exposure for our students to have the real world of 24-7 news, the better their preparation for jobs after graduation will be. End quote. For more information on the partnership, visit chargerbulletin.com. And now for your Charger Sports update, we go to Cameron Haley. Thank you, Kaylee. Women's soccer played a 2-2 draw against any 10 rival St. Anselm on Wednesday at KO Field. The Chargers took an early 2-0 lead in the first half with goals by senior Rachel Dempsey and junior Emily Morello. The Chargers lost the lead in the second half, giving up two goals in three minutes. The team went on to two overtime periods, but neither were able to find the winning goal. 
Women's soccer is now 3, 6, and 4 in conference play and are in danger of not making the playoffs. Men's soccer broke their five-game losing streak by beating St. Michael's by a score of 2-1 at home on Tuesday. Junior Sukricha Dudek had a big game, grabbing three points, and sophomore Nate Tepreduzzi also contributed the offensive attack with his second goal of the season. Men's soccer will play their final game on October 27th against St. Rose at 7 p.m. at KO Field. Field hockey lost a 1-0 heartbreaker to Mercy on Wednesday night under the lights of Della Camera Stadium. The Chargers accumulated a season-high 10 shots, with two of them being on goal. Freshman goalkeeper uh, Natalie Shaker faced a season-low 13 shots while making six saves. Field hockey will play their final game of the season on the 27th at Bentley. Volleyball swept Bridgeport in three sets on Thursday night at the Charger Gym. With the sweep, the Chargers are now 16-7 on the year as they close out their non-conference schedule. Senior Caroline Martin led the way in the game with 13 kills. The Chargers have four more conference games to play as they get ready for the NE10 tournament. And that's all for sports and back to you Kaylee. The Seton Art Gallery recently opened their newest exhibit titled What Makes America Great? Reporter Mitsuki Sanchez went to the opening and got more info on the exhibit. On Thursday, October 26, Seton Gallery in Dodds Hall held an opening exhibit for What Makes America Great? The exhibit is a collection of designs of things that artists truly believe make America great, curated by Guy Serge Emanuel. It's an exhibition I saw in Chicago this summer at university, and I wanted to bring it here. My first instinct when I went in, I was like, this will be great to have University of New Haven. So I got in touch with the curator of this old network, Creative Action Network, and I was able, he was willing to have an exhibition here. He started sending us the file, and instead of being a traveling exhibition, he sent us all the digital files and we were able to print it here. Well, our class was brought to the gallery today, and um, the, my favorite piece was the one with the woman painting on the brick because all the colors really pulled me in. I agree. I liked that one a lot. I think um, the idea behind it, like saying art is, makes America great, is like a good saying because everyone can express who they are in a different way. One of the great things about this exhibit is different professors of different departments, political science, a communication journalism, are bringing their students in to look at the exhibit, but also to ask them the question, what makes America great? So this is more like an eye opener, but also a brain opener and involves critical thinking. So re ask yourself really what makes this country great. I'm Mitsuki Garvey Sanchez reporting for the Charger Bulletin. We end this week with sad news for the university community. Student Connor Bradshaw, a sophomore, was killed in a single car crash over fall break. Connor was a mechanical engineering major from Saratoga Springs, New York. The sheriff's office in Milton, New York, where the accident took place, said the car went around a curve and stuck a tree. The crash also killed a second passenger. Connor's family is requesting donations in Bradshaw's memory to the Galway Central School Athletic Department in lieu of flowers. Well, that's all we have for Charger Bulletin News. Make sure to follow us on all social media platforms. For the Charger Bulletin, I'm Kaylee Freshler.